One of the things that will improve your artwork, whether it be pencils, pens, or paints, is tonal values. But what is a tonal value? How do you achieve them? How do you recognize them? And how do you adjust the tone? We're going to talk about some of that and more right after this. Hi, I'm Tim Longwell of Longwell Art, where we help you create for contentment by reigniting your creativity to bring you health and happiness. So what is tonal value? Tonal value is the color change that you see when you look out across the sky or the ground. Things up close are darker, the things farther away are more pale. Depending on the colors, you can have several blues of different shades all side by side, whether it be flowers or furniture or something on the wallpaper. Those are all tonal values. I'm going to demonstrate a little bit how you would get that with oil paints. And the same principle would work whether you're using shading with pencils or acrylics or watercolors. It all depends on how dark you make your colors. We're going to start off. We're going to take a Nice chunk of white paint. We're gonna put it right up there. Then we're gonna take a nice chunk of black paint. And we're gonna put it right up there. Now those are your extremes in your tones. Your light and your dark. The best way to get and figure out your tonal values is to make yourself a strip somewhat like this. So you'll take half of your white, half of your black, and mix them together. And you'll see it's starting to turn gray. Then to get the tones in between, you take Half of your white again. Take an equal amount of your center tone and mix them together. And you can do this on your palette as well. You don't have to do it up on a canvas. In fact, it's actually easier on a palette got it up here so it's easier for you to see today. Notice how it's a lighter gray. It's lighter gray than that one. To get a dark scale, you do the same thing. Take some of your gray, some of your black of equal amounts, and you mix them together. Notice it's not black, but it's not a 50% gray like that, so it's a different tone quality. Then to get your next one, you take some more of your white, take an equal part of your center color, it's 
It's not white. It's not as dark a gray either. Same principle over here. Be a part of your make some more of your black. It really helps to pick up the black. And such is the life of painting. Mix them together. See, it's not black. It's not the same color as this one either. And so on. You can do it. I'll pick up a little more white over here. Put it there. I'll put that down there. We'll come back and use it here in a minute. I'll take some black. Make sure we got an equal part of white. I'm going to stay up there. I did that wrong. <laughs> That's okay. And you're going to make mistakes too. That's no big deal. You're going to take this shade and an equal part of your white and lighten it down. And what I'm using to mix this is what's known as a mixing palette knife. And we'll get into palette knives later as we use them more and more. But this is the one you'll see most commonly for mixing. Another type you'll see that's used for mixing is this little spade like this. It's called a trowel. I'll give you a good look at it there. And the trowels come in different sizes. As you can see, the shades just keep getting lighter towards white. And you can take this as far down as you want, and you can do the same with your black. Grab some more white. Equal amount of the previous color. Eventually what will happen In fact, this one we actually got too much white in You see that color there that I mixed actually goes in there very similar to this one. Because it's, it, you got to get your equal parts. So I would do that again here to get the right amount of black. Equal amount of white. But as you can see from your tonal values, it's easy to mess them up. But you go from a black to a, dark, a lighter black, and you just keep, and you come through your lighter colors like that. And that's how you make your tonal values. Start at your extremes, split it, 
and then to keep taking from each side whether it be from your light side to your dark side and as you bring those in they'll taper down and change your tonal depth of color either how dark or how light it is and that's pretty much tonal value now you can do that with any color you want it doesn't have to be black and it doesn't have to be white you can do it whether it's a yellow a blue a purple it's the same effect mix it on your palette start with a solid white on one end your dark color on the other end make the same amount in the center usually the easiest way is to go half and then half from here half, and as you move in towards the center you'll take half like from half from here and here gave us that here and white gave us this here and here gave us this here and here gave us this and it's just same principle you'll use tonal value like I said in just pretty much anything you're doing but the advantage is is it will bring life to your painting with the tonal value tonal value will make it seem more realistic because look in your yard are all the greens the same in your yard you got the greens from your brush bushes and shrubs and trees and the grass and any flowers in the flower bed the green on the stems and leaves of those they're all different shades new grass is a different color than old grass that's been mowed and cut more often than the new growing grass the angle of light can be given effect by tonal values for example if you were looking at a darker painting these colors would indicate the direction of your light so basically the light would be as if it were coming from this direction to shine on the darker objects over here when it comes when you're doing light so there are many benefits to tonal so it's something you want to learn and practice um, in fact the um, inexpensive little cheapy packages the tubes I think they're like two or three dollars at Walmart get you a dark color of your favorite color and a light color of your favorite color so like a whether it's a yellow and a black a pink and a purple whatever get two bright and dark colors and then get your tube of white and just mix them on your palette using this procedure and practice it and you'll see how easy it is after a while to automatically make that color whether you're using watercolors acrylic paints or oil paints or if you're using any form of pastel if you're drawing with pencils and pens it will be your shadings practice with your drawing make a light mark over here and a dark mark over here and just slowly work on making your pencil lines darker to match your dark line here starting from the light line and work across this won't work real good with the wax pencil you make a light line like this make a dark line like this make light line Make a little darker line, 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 and you finally get to this point. Same principle, and that's what you would use for your tonal values and shading. In your pencil and drawings in your pen drawings if you're using an ink pen let's see I gotta 
you're drawing a with a pen, you'd use lines across. So you just make lines across like that. That would give one shade. And depending on how dark you want your shading, you can come across like this the other way to add to that shading because it'll fill in. You can go darker by taking those two angles and then adding a third angle. Add a fourth angle. It's called cross hatching when you're doing that in drawing. And it'll slowly but surely it'll get that darker and darker. And with an ink pen, it'll show up really fast if you're using any type of inks. That's total value. If you got any questions, be sure and drop them in the comment section. I'll be glad to answer them for you. And if enough questions come up of the right kind, very similar, we can always make another video for you to help you better understand. If you like what you saw today, be sure and check the subscribe button. Hit the little notification bell so that you get the notices when we upload a new video or go live for you. Check out the videos over here for more hints, tips, tricks, and such from other videos. If you'd like to check out some gear or maybe get your own Create for Contentment t-shirt, check out our website at longwellart.com. And we'll see you next time on Create for Contentment. In the meantime, you be sure and have fun.